Well, good morning and welcome back to Walk the Word, where we read God's Word together and look how we can apply it to our lives and walk it out each and every day. And today we're going to be looking at 2 Peter, 1 Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verses 4 through to 10. And I will just read them to us. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering special sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For, for in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and one who trusts in him, who will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, the stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And this morning I want to focus uh, on uh, verse 9 in particular, where it says that we are a chosen people, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. And this is a quote, actually, from Exodus chapter 19, where God calls the Jewish nation to be those very things. He calls them to be his chosen people, to be his royal priesthood, to be a, his special possession. And when we read this in Peter, what we're reading is that actually now that is us. We are called as the church to be those things. We are called to be a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a special possession. And so what I want to do is just have a quick look at those three things and see what they might mean for us. So first of all, we're called to be his chosen people. And that means that our primary identity is no longer in our ethnicity or our gender even or uh, how we might be, be feeling or what we do as a job or our, our surname or our family background. Our primary identity is that we are Christians. We are his. And all those other things are secondary. But first and foremost, we are Christians. We are chosen by God. We are his people. And that's who we are, first and foremost. Not our ethnicity, not our background, not our job, not the things we do. We are Christians who also do those things. And actually so often as I live my life, I can get caught up in doing loads of other stuff and that can start to creep in and become my identity. Whereas the truth is, first and foremost, I am a Christian. I am chosen by him. And maybe today you need to come before God and repent of starting to allow other things to become first and foremost in your mind. Because the truth is, if you are a follower of Jesus, first and foremost, your identity is in him. You are a Christian. You are a follower of him. Secondly, we're called to be a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. And that means that Primarily, we're not called to serve ourselves, but we're called to serve the King. We're called to serve Jesus, we're called to serve God as his priests to the communities that we are in. We're to, to mediate between the people that we come across and God. That's what the word priest means, it means mediator. And so we're called to be the King's mediators, to mediate between the people that are around us and God. We're called to be God's army of priests, bringing reconciliation, bringing hope, bringing the kingdom, pulling people closer to God and allowing them to see the reality of who God is so he feels closer to them by extending his kingdom, by showing them love, by showing them mercy, by showing them grace, by showing his power and might, by 
doing all the, the things that we so often talk about. We're called to be a royal priesthood. And first of all, our, our, what we're called to do is primarily serve others and not serve ourselves. And again, so often I can make selfish choices, choices that are primarily based on me and not based on serving him. We are called to be a royal priesthood, a people that go and mediate between the people that are around us and God and bring hope and bring the gospel to them. Thirdly, we get to be God's special possession. And this isn't something that we're called to do. This isn't something that we need to do anything to achieve. It's just who we are. We get to be loved by God. We get to be cared for as the, the greatest thing, as the special possession of the king of kings. The Greek word used here is one that refers to the private treasure of the king. It's where the king would have his most special things, his most valuable things, the things that were most of, of most monetary value, but also of most emotional value. The things that he held dearest, the things that he wanted to hold on to for the longest, were part of his private treasure, part of his private collection. And that's who you are. That's who I am. That's who we are as Christians. We are God's special possession. We're the thing that he cares about the most. We're the thing that he values the most. We're the things that are special and closest to him. The things that he holds dearest is his people. You and me. Wow. <laughs> the creator of the universe, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that is ruling and reigning, calls you his special possession. Just take that in and think about that for a moment. You are God's special possession. And sometimes it can be really difficult to accept that. I don't always feel like God's special possession. I certainly don't act all the time like God's special possession. I can think of some of the mistakes that I've made in the past, some of the mistakes that I've made today even, and go, well, how am I God's special possession? But the clue is in the last lines of these verses. For once you, have, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You are the recipient of God's mercy. You are forgiven. You are free. <laughs> you are looked on by a merciful God as his special possession, as part of his chosen people, part of his royal priesthood. Not because of anything you've done, not because you've worked hard, not because you've achieved a level, but because of his mercy and grace that he has shown us in Jesus. And today you get to go and live in the good of it. You get to go and live in the good of the mercy that you have received and bring mercy to those that are around you. Getting to live in the fact that you are a special possession. You are chosen by God to go and to act as a mediator between him and the people that are around you and draw them closer to him. That's what he's called you to today and you get to do that with confidence knowing that you have received mercy. Thank you so much uh, for listening and we'll see you again soon on Walk the Word.